Good afternoon, everyone. Again, we've reached uh, oh, actually seven after the hour, so we're going to get started with this uh, third breakout section, session. Again, uh, this is the employer focus uh, starting uh, strap uh, breakout session. Uh, if you need the other sessions, please follow the link. Um, and, and apparently session three is requiring uh, a password. So uh, Grace in the chat has listed those passwords if it is needed. Uh, but we're going to get started this session. Uh, so yeah, that was a, a great opening session we had with a, a bunch of wonderful speakers from Idaho and, and on the national level as well. Uh, for those uh, who might not remember, uh, Emmanuel had introduced myself at the beginning of the main presentation. Uh, my name is Mark Genoa. I'm an associate director at JFF, and I work with Emmanuel on all things related uh, apprenticeship and work-based learning at JFF. Uh, so today we have uh, a lineup of uh, three great speakers uh, uh, for this breakout session. Uh, but then, you know, we're going to open it up after their slides for additional questions and discussion that uh, attendees might have uh, even after the main session. Uh, so the three presenters are Marie Price. Uh, she is the Director of Training and Development at Idaho uh, Forest Group. We have Marty Colin, the CEO of Perfect Plumbing, Heating and Air, and Michelle Stout, the Apprenticeship Coordinator at the Idaho uh, Department of Labor. So please, um, I'll kick it off to I'll kick it off to our first presenter. So you may begin. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Marie Price with Idaho Forest Group, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our School to Registered Apprenticeship Program from the employer's um, perspective. Background on Idaho Forest Group, we have seven mills that produce lumber, six in Idaho and one in western Montana. We have approximately 1,100 employees. We have six registered apprenticeship occupations. Currently, we have 64 active apprentices. We have completed 163 apprentices over the past seven years, and we have um, 31 new apprentices this fiscal year to date. Next slide, please. So you heard a few of these points, but from the employer perspective for us, um, in addition to building the talent pipeline, STRAP or School to Registered Apprenticeship is important to us because it builds awareness of our company and of the careers that are available, family sustaining careers in the skilled trades, and also allows for students that are 16 to 17 year olds to begin working in a trade that's normally reserved for 18 and over. Next slide. So to get started in School to Registered Apprenticeship, it's important to have the information out that explains why and how students age 16 and 17 can work in those uh, hazardous occupations that um, follow this criteria. So first of all, a, a, and when I say hazardous occupation, millwright is the number one um, occupation that we build a school to registered apprenticeship pipeline. It's not a licensed trade, but students are exposed to um, a lot of machinery in our mills. So it's very important that we follow guidelines and particularly safety. So we're very particular about who we hire and the background and aptitude that they have to work in um, a production situation. So first of all, there must be a school to register an apprenticeship agreement signed between the high school and the employer. So having that relationship with the high school is imperative. For the student, they must be in good academic standing, and that means both their grades and their attendance. And they must be enrolled in a related career and technical course. So most of our students come from a welding course or a diesel course um, is primarily, um, or industrial mechanics is another course that we've, we've uh, re received students from. Um, the student's parent or, parent or guardian must sign the agreement. So it's very important to have the student parent or guardian on board. Uh, the student must always be under the supervision of a journeyman, and the employer must enroll the student in RAPIDS, which is the database that um, we use to track apprentices. Next slide. So currently, we have school to registered apprenticeship agreements with Kootenai Technical Education, which is similar to DTEC. It's a career tech ed school in northern Idaho. It's based in Rastrum. Lakeland High School in Rastrum, 
Sandpoint High School, Clark Fork. We just signed uh, with Grangeville High School, which isn't on this list. We also have registered apprenticeship in Montana and have an agreement with Superior High School. Next, please. So getting started. The key to getting started is planning. It really takes time um, and effort to make sure that you have a well um, thought out and successful school to registered apprenticeship program. So of course you first have to have the program registered. So for us, the school to registered apprenticeship, again, our millwright and our heavy um, equipment technician are the two programs that we take school to registered apprenticeship students in. It's really important to have an internal support team. And that means that you have to have your HR, human resources on board. They need to know about it. They need to be intimately involved because they're helping you with setting the hourly wage, ensuring we're following Department of Labor standards. Um, they're helping with recruitment, um, with onboarding, all of that interviewing. So human resources is critical. Um, also, the manager of the area where you are going to have your school to register to apprenticeship uh, students working, and any journey workers that you may identify. Um, whoever the uh, supervisor, the director, the CEO, anyone and everyone you can get on board to support the program is critical. And if you have a team that can really plan and launch the program, that is also what it's going gonna, it's gonna to take to be successful. Um, of course, school contacts, so reaching out to the school and um, having those contacts with the principal, the school counselor, the uh, teacher for the career tech ed or whichever class that uh, corresponds to the apprenticeship that you want to uh, begin is very important. And I would recommend to build those relationships. It would not be an email because schools and, and get many emails like you probably do every day and it's easy for them to go delete, delete, delete if they don't know you. So how do they get to know you? Um, it's by showing up, by participating, by offering to attend um, career fairs, job fairs, coming in and being a guest speaker, maybe funding or supporting some type of program, equipment, supplies, or something where the, the school needs. So really building that relationship, getting to know the school, um, getting to know the students, really um, feeling comfortable and that school also feeling comfortable with you as an employer. Take, having the school, um, the principal, the counselor, and of course students come out and tour. Um, so whenever you can do that, uh, it's really important to just build that relationship. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. It might take multiple meetings, but it's definitely worth it in the long run. You also want to prepare outreach materials. So that could include things like information about your company, information about what is school to registered apprenticeship, um, what is the application process, um, information about what the expectations are, those kinds of things. Really important to think through that. In our materials, um, we made sure that students knew that part of the qualifications were to have transportation to and from work that they had to be drug free, that they had to have approval of their parents to participate, and that they had to be available a certain schedule to work. So if a student is so busy with their activities, which many of them are, and school, they may not have the time. So it's really important to flush that out um, and to also let them know how much flexibility they may or may not have in their work schedule. Uh, we also delineate our aptitude expectations so such as following safety guidelines, lockout, tagout, being mechanically inclined, knowledge of basic um, hand tools, ability to stay on task, being motivated to learn, being um, willing to follow instructions, and also being willing to communicate and ask questions or discuss any problems or issues that might arise. So as you can tell, we're not looking just for any student. We're looking for the best students. And we also make that very clear that our expectations for who we're going to take on in school to register to apprenticeship are very high. We're looking for that star student that has the motivation, the willingness to learn, the eagerness, and is really looking for a career. We're also um, very clear about our pay and benefits. There are no benefits for the student that work, of course, they're working under 30 hours a week, but we do have a starting wage, and then after they work 1,000 hours, they have a bump in their pay. 
um, were very clear again about their schedule um, and again also attendance. So we um, do outline the attendance policy and that the um, school is and us and ourselves will be talking about attendance back and forth. That's part of that clear communication that needs to happen and that um, the, the company will be reporting any attendance issues to the school. Um, we also outline evaluation periods and performance reviews because we want to have the opportunity if it isn't working out after a certain period of time that the student can exit gracefully or we can um, ask the student and um, to, you know, talk about the fact that this isn't working out or that those, that student is not meeting expectations. So um, we are very clear about that. Um, and then also, how does the program end? That's really important for students to know. When does it end? And so um, we make it clear that the, the school to registered apprenticeship program ends either when the student graduates from high school or when they turn 18 years old, whichever is later. And um, if there is an opening after this point and the student wants to apply for it, they are welcome and they will continue on as a regular apprentice. Um, students that don't um, continue on with us will be discontinued um, in the RAPID database. Um, and the school can also end the program at any time if the student is not meeting attendance and grade requirements. So those are really important pieces that need to be communicated both to the student to the parent, uh, the teacher, and to their um, and to the counselor. The school to registered apprenticeship documents include things like the agreement with the school. Uh, release of information is really important because that allows the employer and the school to discuss grades and attendance. And then there is a, a, a 671 form which um, is required to be signed, which is part of the apprenticeship agreement. Next uh, slide, please. So here, I'm just going to give you some examples of um, how we've done this. So here's an example of our regional manager, Mike My, uh, Henley, presenting at uh, Lakeland High School to students in the industrial maintenance class. Next slide, please. We um, had applicants from that class. We had a signing day. So the young lady um, behind the uh, hard hat there, uh, Ronnie, she signed with us to our Chilco Mill as a heavy equipment technician apprentice. And we did the signing day just like um, a, a student that is going into an athletic scholarship. Uh, so we got the parents there, we got the teachers, representatives from the mill and took pictures and then sent them to the um, paper and they published them. Next slide. We had her sign the 671. That's a small picture of it, but it is a document that's required to sign that is, um, and the parent must sign that. And it just um, talks about what apprenticeship program they're in, what the starting wage is, and it, what, um, how many hours are required to bump up to the next wage. Next slide. So here's Ronnie at Chilco with her mentor, her journeyman mentor, um, Jan Overacker, and she is in our mechanic shop there doing welding. So she also um, went to North Idaho College's diesel tech program this year, and she, uh, we, we scholarshiped her um, for part of the scholarship to the uh, diesel tech program. And she has turned 18 since um, and is continuing on in school. Next slide. Here is Will. He just graduated from Sandpoint High School. He's been a Millwright um, School to Register Apprenticeship program since 2018. He started as a junior. He just graduated. And his story is interesting because he would come to work at 4 a.m. and work till 7 a.m. Um, started out three days a week, and then it grew. And when school was out this spring, he worked uh, full time, and again at that 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. or later. Um, and basically worked full time uh, while he was finishing school. And he has just been offered a full time position and started this week as a full time millwright apprentice. And he'll be making uh, by the end of apprenticeship about $29 an hour. And that's at our Laclede Mill. Next slide. And so here's our ideal. Our ideal is to take a student that's in a career tech program like Grant here, who was in the diesel program, and um, help them through their schooling. Grant actually went to the diesel technology program at, 
NIC and graduated, he has stayed with us all these years. And now he is a parts coordinator for us at our central fabrication shop in Athol, Idaho. Wonderful workout, worker. You can see how he's grown over the years. Um, but the truth is not all of our uh, strap apprentices stay. We retain about 33%. So that's not the same percentage as you saw in the apprenticeship regular apprenticeship, but um, we are okay with that. We understand that some of these students are going to move on to four-year college. Some are going to try it and decide this isn't the career for them, and others are going to get their training from us, and they're going to move on to other um, employers. And we tend to be a feeder for Kaiser Aluminum in Spokane and Clearwater Paper in Lewiston. So um, it is worth it for us because um, we're able to have these um, apprentices with us for whether it's one year, three years, or four or four or five, they're able to do some of those tasks that free up our journeyman millwright to do the more complicated tasks. So um, we enjoy getting to know them, to giving back, and also we do um, retain some great ones like Grant and Will. Next slide. So this is what we share to our school to our students when they're looking at how do I start. We um, explain to them that they've got to complete an application, an online application, submit their resume. They'll attend an interview. They are going to have a drug test, which sometimes narrows the pool, um, a background check and physical exam. Once they are um, um, approved for the uh, apprenticeship, they will sign the agreement with their school um, and with their parents. And then they're going to begin working under journeyman supervision and they'll schedule um, their work schedule around their schooling. Now, um, one thing to note is that with several of our apprentices, we have also had them co-enroll in the work-study program. And Will was an example of that at Sandpoint High. Um, the work-study program allows students to leave uh, school early during the work year, or school, excuse me, during the school year. And Excuse me. So it allows them to leave school early, and they also the school gets attendance credit. So it's a win-win for the school and for the employer. So um, being able, they can be dual enrolled in apprenticeship and and work study. Next slide, please. So the lessons that we've learned: number one is to have a plan. Really important. Um, take the time to think out um, how um, the process is going to work, who needs to be involved, um, think ahead into what questions everyone has. Um, so defining the program is really important, and it's important to clearly communicate, not only externally, but internally. It's important for those that are going to be involved in the apprenticeship in any level, whether it's human resources or the department or the division. Um, to know that this program is going on and that the student will be here. Um, it's important to have a very good mentor journeyman that is a great communicator that's patient and willing to teach. Um, and so defining that out, having a plan to move through the school with information, um, like for example, next year we've been in touch with KTAC and we're going to start in the fall around October um, with coming into the school. Uh, with information about Idaho Force Group, and then moving on to um, those that are interested, having um, going to a job fair, um, and then offering the applications uh, late fall, and hopefully starting our juniors in early spring. They'll work in the summer, and then work in strap during the next school year. So um, that is all I have. And if you have any questions, I would take them, or we'll turn it over to the next speaker. Uh, thank you, Marie. And yeah, we'll we'll move to to Marty. There's definitely some questions that came up to to in the chat, so we'll address them at the end. But uh, Marty, please. Okay. So um, Marty Cullen here, and uh, I'm the I guess I'll be the poster child for a smaller business that doesn't have an HR department, doesn't have anybody to full time recruit. Um, I don't have the, the people to put things together because we're running a, a small family-owned business here in, uh, in Boise, and, and so we, we've gone about this a whole lot differently. The background is um, we are a plumbing, heating, and air business, and um, we are um, located right here in Boise, and for about eight or ten years, I've complained about not being able to find people. 
And um, one day I happened to be at Rotary and I was complaining to the superintendent of the district and he said, well, let's put together a plan. Um, and I began working with them and we, they, they built this school, this trade school out there, but then a couple of years later, no place to hire or no one was willing to hire the kids or thinking about hiring the kids. So they came back and we got to talking and um, I'm the lucky guy um, that has had everybody help. So although um, the forest products folks have a, a, a well-oiled machine doing this, I'm the other end of the spectrum. And my experience has been, um, this is easy to do if you're willing to ask some questions and you're willing to, um, to jump in without knowing things. And you really, you just don't have to, um, to know a ton to make this thing work and make them happen. I think there's been a few questions on trades. Understand trades have their journeymen. There is a little bit of difference between uh, the state requirements and the federal requirements, but all the benefits of being a federal, federally approved or with the federal labor board, um, that they help with our state process. So what are, what are, I guess I'm gonna give you some experience. We started in April with our, our program. So I'm very new to the program, but rather than go through what our program is, it's well-defined and um, and I think it was covered very well by Marie um, from what you have to do. The things that we've learned, well, I guess right now we have two juniors in high school working for us. Uh, one is in the HVAC um, doing our heating and air and learning that. And the other one is um, an apprentice in the plumbing department and learning to be a plumber. They're both under 18, so it's through this STRAP program that will allow them to go out in the field and, um, and work with our journeymen to, to begin building those skills. Now, our philosophy is he who builds the best army is going to win. And in um, the trades business where we know we have a shortage of um, skilled tradesmen, we've decided that building it um, and building what works for our business model is going to be a heck of a lot better than trying to um, to convert someone from another plan into what we need to have. And well, I'll tell you what, when you get someone that's 17 years old, very highly moldable, moldable and very, very interested in doing what it is we want. Um, we, we treat them exactly like they are any other apprentice. They go to all our trainings in the morning. They participate. We do a lot of skill practice and role playing and what's been the most fascinating part of this whole thing is bringing in 17-year-olds um, has created um, some diversity in our thinking and, um, and how we look at things and helping us to understand what we need to be looking at in the future. So as they're learning, as they're learning, our experience has been, I'm learning as much or more than they are about what I need to be focused on and how I need to be be changing the vision and the focus of our business so that in five years and seven years we're going to be successful with with the with our new customers so that's been an awesome part of of having them on the team i also it's been it first started our experience was the journeyman like i do not want that kid coming out with me to my job now we are out doing service repair and maintenance yeah, he'll be in the way, that doesn't sound good, as they've met our, our two apprentices, and the apprentices have been doing training every week with the, um, with the journeyman, although they haven't been out in the field yet with them. They're all wanting them, and everybody's kind of, I shouldn't say everybody, but we have four plumbers that have already uh, decided that, that Hunter, who's our young man on the plumbing side, is, is their apprentice, and they're gonna keep him, and they're gonna train him, and they're gonna work him. So we've had great, great um, response from our team, which has been awesome. Now, go back to how we got started, I guess. Um, we're a bootstrap operation when it comes to apprenticeship. And I wanna to talk to the folks that are like, wow, this sounds like work. The Department of Labor, when, when I get a phone call at Marty's office, it says that someone from the Department of Labor is on the phone, my initial response is, uh-oh. Um, what what happened? What's wrong? And so when I first started down this and, and I had to contact a few folks in the Department of Labor, I was quite nervous about what does this mean? What am I getting into? I've got to tell you, they've been absolutely phenomenally helpful. Um, they have walked me through the process of creating my curriculum, of putting the plan together, submitting the plan, 
how I need to go do the paperwork. And now we're in the process of, um, of tutoring us on the RAPIDS program. You heard uh, Marie talk about it. Uh, a few weeks ago, I didn't even know what that was. And um, our, our folks in Idaho have been, been just amazing at walking us through. They set up the classes to help me do that because I just don't have the staff and the time to, to learn from scratch. So experience from putting it together with all the support, I, I couldn't talk higher, more highly of them. I will say that um, the things that I didn't do real well so that nobody else falls into the trap is I, I might have let people do too much work for me in the beginning and I didn't really understand what I was signing up for. I was trying to help the dentist technical school program and they had these apprentices with no jobs and I just said, sure, I was the whining, complaining person, I'll take them on. Um, and so I didn't take ownership early on of the program. I let others do some of it. I've learned as I've had to go back and ask questions if there's one thing that that we have done now that we had to do or should have done early on is a person takes ownership of your strap program and your registered apprenticeship program if you don't have one already so that uh, you can make this thing efficient and effective and um, that person also the other thing that we had to come up with is what's our end game why are we doing this and what are the goals and we have two two clearly different um, things that we're striving for. Our, our ultimate goal would be that we are building apprentices who will fill the voids in our workforce and, and be able to step right in and um, a couple years into a journeyman's position and get a, a jump on the gun instead of waiting until they've had two or three years out of school before they figured that this might be a great place to come. And we're excited about that with the, the kids that we have and the couple more that we intend to hire um, in the fall. What, what's become more clear is that with a goal of learning what these kids need and, um, and how they learn and how we can better facilitate the opportunity for them to, to become an apprentice, even if they don't stay on, we believe that we are going to be significantly better with anybody and everybody that comes to us in the next few years as we start running them through. And because we jumped in and didn't have the experience, we're, we're learning as we go, but, but it's, we didn't know what questions to ask. And, and now we're making great progress and we're moving forward. And we would be thrilled to death if one or two of the kids chose to move on and go to a, a different career and secondary um, education. And I just think from a trades perspective, if, um, if one of these young men is a second year apprentice and has, has done a great job for us and they head off to school, the ability for them to work in college and you know, they're making 14 to $16 an hour right now working for us, uh, that's going to be a lot better than some of the other jobs that they could have up there. And I know that if there was kids going to Boise State, I'd hire them in a heartbeat if they had experience. So that's become one of our goals is to make them employable if they choose to go somewhere else. And it's helped us really focus on them. Uh, and if there's any advice I can give is just ask for help, ask for help, and ask for help. The, um, when I became willing to admit that I didn't know what the heck I was doing and I really had no idea what I had signed up for, I was amazed at the amount of help that came in and, and kind of helped me pull this thing together so that we can be successful and help our kids be successful. Um, so with that, I guess I'll let it, that's kind of my experience with this. We're just getting going with the kids, so I'll turn it back over. Excellent. Thank you, Marty. And now we'll move on to our, our last in the panel, Michelle. Uh, Michelle, can you give us about uh, uh, five minutes uh, or, or less of your piece? I, I definitely want to make sure we have Thank you. Q&A because we have a lot of good Michelle? Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and go to the next slide. I'm Michelle with the Idaho, whoops, okay, the last two slides. Uh, there we go. So I'm Michelle with uh, the Idaho Department of Labor. I'm an apprenticeship consultant here at the department and um, we're going to kind of go over how to, how to get this started, how to get the ball rolling um, in the event that you don't have uh, apprenticeship standards with the United States Department of Labor. You're going to connect with any of us coordinators in the registered apprenticeship program with the Idaho Department of Labor in order to get those developed. And we'll work with you. Um, gosh, we do we do a lot of 
we try to make it as easy for individuals as possible in order to get these set up. Um, it doesn't take an incredible amount of time. Mostly what, it, what we seem to have, um, what we seem to have with the employers is them nailing down exactly what it is they want in their standards that's going to work for them. And the work processes that we have, the related technical instructions that are suggested for the apprenticeships, those can all be customized to whatever your needs are. So if you do, or once you do, have those standards set up, then um, the employer is the one who's going to connect with the high schools uh, in your area, your CTA, CTE providers. Those are going to be your partners in establishing what, um, how you guys are going to work that out. The agreements are going to, um, they're going to be hashed out between you guys. We don't know what it is that you need for your organization, and you're going to let the, the school know and work together with them to develop how it is you're going to structure that program. Like Marie said, she had an individual come in at 4 a.m. Some people come in after school. So, it, um, yeah, it's really flexible in that respect. Um, and then if you want to go ahead and go to the next slide, this is just kind of a brief overview. Marie already covered that um, in relation to how it works with business. So you're going to develop those standards. Then you're going to collaborate with the entities that provide that technical instruction um, with STRAP and the students. You're going to connect with your career counselors and, and develop uh, your program that way. Then um, you're going to prepare your students and your parents, which are a critical point you know, to make here, is we have to have an agreement signed with the parent in order to develop the registered apprenticeship into a student to registered apprenticeship program. Um, then you're going to go ahead and you're going to recruit. And you can do this however it works best for you in the school. Some people take a day and they interview numerous people. And uh, some businesses, they connect with the school and they, they spread it out according to what the business needs are. Um, from there, you're going to go ahead and hire uh, the talent that you have found within the school. Um, they can begin training with your organization while they're going to school, just like Marie demonstrated. And then once they graduate, they capture their high school diploma and they can continue on with the employer. Not all, not every student does. Some students take different career pathways. But if they do continue on with the employer, they've already banked some hours towards their registered apprenticeship. They've knocked out some of the RTI for that registered apprenticeship. And then um, depending upon the program, uh, it could be 2,000 hours, 4,000 hours, uh, 8,000 hours. But at the end of it, that's when they will receive that credential that's portable across state lines, much like a degree, that states that they have completed the apprenticeship. And, and that's, I think that's my five minutes, right? <laughs> Excellent. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. Uh, we've had some great, great questions come up in the chat. Uh, some of them are more kind of procedural and operational, but uh, one that uh, is a really great, great question, and this is probably directed at, at um, the two employers we have on the line, is how did you learn what the gaps and skills were, and how did you fill those gaps? So, so really, how can you, how'd you identify, you know, what the skills gaps were at, at your business, and really how did you develop the program, uh, you know, to, that could address those, those gaps? Well, this is Marty, and and for us, it's a, it's probably a little bit easier um, being in the plumbing and the, the HVAC trades. We've always had an apprenticeship program, just not managed by us. Um, and and the it's it's the gap is is in the education, the the code, and the the skill. But it, but it's a progressive four-year thing. So I've always had a program for getting there. I've just never had a program. That allowed me to get there in a structured way that helped people um, work sequentially towards towards being a, a super great uh, person. I actually worked with the schools. Um, I have some some contacts with some other folks to write my curriculum that covered the gaps that I had. So I had a general thing, and I was like, these are the areas that that most schools don't cover. And it was it was quite easy with the help of the Department of Labor. They walk you through this kind of stuff. So don't don't make this as a panic. This is about what's your end goal of wanting for a person. You can work backwards once you know what you're looking for 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 a great employee. 
Excellent. Thank you, Marty. Uh, I don't know, uh, Marie, did you want to expand on that or? I would just say that because uh, millwright, for example, is not a licensed trade. It was more just defining what the job skills required um, and then looking at um, whether we could, you know, assess competencies. We also have worked closely with North Idaho College and um, our, you know, high school to look at what their um, learning plans are and then I, and we are on the advisory board for both. Um, so really looking at those curriculums for the related instruction and then um, aligning with what um, these uh, employers, employees are required to do and um, identifying where those gaps are. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we do, yep, yeah, we definitely have time for, for a couple more questions. So these are more of the procedural questions. Um, can the related training that the students is required to get uh, can it be provided by a third party instead of a high school? I don't know if that's a, maybe a, a question for Michelle one. So there's a variety of ways that the related technical instruction component can be met. Um, that's going to really be developed between you and the school. Uh, if the school can't provide it, then there are alternative options out there. It just really depends on the program. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, and then, uh, Moving through the questions, um, Ken, um, how would you do this at, uh, how would you do STRAP at a regular high school as opposed to a CTE program? Um, I don't know, again, Michelle? So again, if the regular high school is not able to provide um, what it is that you're, you're needed in terms of skill set, then we can take a look at alternatives that might be available out there. There are a lot of online programs um, that employers use for registered apprenticeships to meet that related technical instruction component. And uh, in conjunction with that, it has to fit with what's going on with the school too. Uh, to some degree so that, that that student can get credit for the work that they're doing. But those are things that you, when you develop that relationship with the entity that you're working with at the school, you guys are going to figure out what's going to work. Excellent. Uh, so it sounds like the, these, press, these programs mm -hmm. are very much customizable depending on, on the employer and the school and their situation. That, they are, yeah. Yeah. And I'll just add that um, we've had a homeschool student as well um, do school to register to apprenticeship and they've been able to um, use curriculum um, on, online or and study that was third party. Um, we work with TPC and NCCER for curriculum for our reg some of our registered apprenticeship programs. So that's available as well. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, wrapping up in, the, in these next couple, I'm looking at these uh, other questions that we have come up. Uh, is there a place? Uh, is there a place where uh, the um, these apprenticeship program standards? There's anywhere you know if an employer was interested that had a similar occupation. Is there is there anywhere where they can uh, get them? Are they online? Do they have to request them or anything like that? Um, anybody who's interested in finding out more about a particular occupation is more than welcome to to connect with me. Um, I've developed sample standards so that it'll give you an idea. They're, but keep in mind that they are samples, that they are customizable, and that um, you know we're going to work with you in order to get it get it set up the way that you need it set up. Okay, excellent. Uh, so uh, moving on to some more uh, you know more kind of uh, stru program structure questions. Um, uh, do you need to make a separate set of standards specifically for STRAP, or can you use existing standards for registered apprenticeship? We can amend those existing standards. Okay. Excellent. And I assume this kind of goes to the other question. Uh, uh, one person asked, you know, currently it seems like their minimum age requirement is 18 to enter into their registered apprenticeship, but it sounds like they could amend their standards uh, to, to accommodate uh, maybe a 17 year old. Is that correct? Correct. So the strap agreement is one of the things that's going to make it so that you can, if you have a 16 year old who's interested and you're interested in hiring, we can make that happen. Excellent. And then uh, the last question to end things out. Um, I assume it says once the student apprentice finishes high school, they can still apprentice with the same employer along with this with post secondary ed. I'm assuming that's correct. Yeah, that is correct. Um, and um, I will just add as an employer that um, many employers will scholarship the student or partially scholarship the student to continue their education if they've got a um, corresponding uh, program that they can take um, at post secondary. <laughs> And, and I would add for us that that, that is our goal, um, that um, that those students would stay on with us afterwards. 
and ha have a great head start. And we just use someone else as the RTI for those um, for those final years, like a College of Western Idaho. There's lots of programs out there. Excellent. Good. All right. As uh, you know, looks like that's it for questions. As we kind of wrap up, any any final words from the three presenters on the line? I would say if anyone has specific questions, don't hesitate to contact me. Um, my email is just my name with the period between first and last at idfg.com. Excellent. Same here, especially any, anybody that's looking towards it in the trades, we have that licensed program um, that's a little bit different along with, with doing it ourselves here. Uh, anybody can reach out to me. I'm happy to help. This is about improving the industry and the youth, not about me. So don't hesitate. I'll make it up or I'll tell you what I do know. I love it, Marty. I love it. Uh, anything else, uh, Michelle, before we end? If you're, if you're interested, even if you're not positive that you want to do this, please reach out and talk with us. We will assess. We'll see what it is that you need, and then we'll do whatever, um, you know, whatever it is you need us to do. Excellent. Thank you. And then, you know, as you see, the, the contacts are up on the screen. Uh, so thank you for attending today's uh, Idaho Apprenticeship Accelerator. Uh, the U.S. Department of Labor, the state of Idaho, and JFF are all available to help support you in developing and in implementing your registered apprenticeship program. If you have any more questions or would like to move forward with apprenticeship at your uh, business or school, uh, please contact one of the, the state reps you see uh, in the screen in, in front of you. Again, we, we very, very much appreciate your, your time today and, and commitment to making Idaho's workforce stronger than ever. Uh, have a good rest of your day and, and be well. Thank you.